I know it's very early, but just tell your neighbor Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, neighbor. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. And as we would like to lift God's praises unto him with this song, kindly just praise the Lord. Just just move a bit. We have to let's let's go this way. Yeah. Now some energy, some energy. Turn it. Blow, 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 blow. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's born child, Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. Hey, hark now, hark now, hear the angels sing, a king was born today. Hey, hey, and we'll live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Hey, hark now, hark now, hear the angels sing. Was born today, hey, hey. and we we'll live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Just do it. Well, Schaefer's voice, the flock by night, the sewer bring new brightening star. They hear a choir of angels say The music seems to come from afar Long time ago, the shepherds heard They hear a new shining star They hear a choir of angels say This music seems to come from afar Hark now hear Hark now hear the angels sing A king was born today hey, hey. Because of Christmas Day, hey, hark now, hey, hark now, hear the angels sing. A king was born today, and man will live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day, now let's do this. Oh, my Lord, you sent your son to save me. Oh, my Lord, your very self you gave us. Oh, my Lord. 
That's in my not and slave us and love me rain once more. Let us go and sing it. Oh my Lord, yeah. you sent your son to save us. Oh my Lord, Lord your very Lord. self you gave us. Oh my Lord, that's in my not and slave us and love me rain once more. Oh. Hey, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, yeah. Your very self you gave us. Oh my Lord, your very self you gave us. Oh my Lord. Let me rain once more. Hey, oh my Lord. Oh my Lord. Hey. You sent your son to save us. Oh my Lord. Your very self you gave us. Oh my Lord. That sin may not enslave us. And love may rain once more. Hark now hear the angels sing. A king was born today. And now we'll live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day, hey, hey. Up now hear hey. the angels sing. The king was born today. A man will live forevermore because, because of Christmas Day. Up now hear. Up now hear the angels sing. A king was born today. A man will live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Prospero año y felicidad I cannot hear you Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad
abonga, si abonga Jesu, si abonga konya ma Jesu, si abonga Jesu, si abonga, si abonga Jesu, si abonga konya ma Jesu, si abonga Jesu, si abonga. much for your word, um, a word that uh, fills us with knowledge and power uh, in, the, in the wisdom of oh God. As we receive it from your servant, Pastor Richard Bundy, O oh God, may you uh, speak through him, O oh God, and uh, may, may we hear of your word, O oh God. May we uh, be filled with attentiveness, O oh God, and may we begin to hear of, of your word, O oh God. We are grateful for your word. Uh, we say thank you and we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Okay, let's appreciate Dero. Um, okay, so uh, good evening. You good? Uh, thank you for making it for the service. Uh, if you're here for the very first time, uh, Bundy Richard is my name. I serve here as youth pastor. It's a joy to have you join us for our final service of the year. Hey, okay, that 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 hit somewhere. Uh, I recall last year, uh, in a service like this, uh, I think Pascal was here. Uh, we just had uh, the worship team recording a cantata so that we can display it online. And there was no congregation. Just a sad night, but it was uh, truly amazing. In fact, we are trying to record this so that we can also air it on the 25th for you guys. You can watch with your families and uh, listen to the songs one more time. Thank you, worship team, for uh, all the efforts you put into to practice. Yes, so we have been going through a series that ends today, uh, Home at Dusk, and uh, we're in the final installment. So turn you into the book of Luke. The book of Luke. I am in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And I'll be reading from verse 26 to 38. Uh, I'll be reading from the NIV. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. Hoping we are there. Allow me to read. And it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Verse 32, he will be great and 
be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Verse 35, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the most high will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. Verse 37, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And that's the reading of God's word. Write it on our hearts. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this evening. Uh, I, I cannot help but be thankful. Last year, desolate, cold, uh, didn't know what we were going to do. But here we are. We have uh, an amazing family that's growing and loves each other and uh, looks out for each other. And so as we look at this final uh, message, I pray those things we do not know you will teach us. Those things we do not have you will give us. And the things we are not will you make us for your glory, our good, our joy, and our peace. For this I pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, a story is told of a 24-year-old boy. He was sitting out from the train's window and he shouted, Dad, look, the trees are going behind. Dad smiled and a young couple sitting nearby looked at the 24-year-old's childish behavior with pity. Suddenly, he exclaimed again, Dad, look, the clouds are running with us. The couple couldn't resist and said to the old man, why don't you take your son to a good doctor? The old man smiled and said, I did. We are just coming from the hospital. My son was blind from birth. He just got his eyes today. This is a common story that's normally told to help us uh, avoid judging people too quickly before we get to know a bit about their, their story. But I believe it's also a story that helps us remember that probably there are moments that we have lost our wonder, this man who was blind now sees, is able to exclaim at every movement that now appears before him. Everything around us that used to inspire awe, mystery, and wonder, just because we could not understand them, suddenly they do not marvel us anymore. The things that brought you joy, playing in the rain, Nancy, getting a hold of the remote control, uh, pretending to be a superhero, the many things that you used to marvel you, the car moving on the road, the plane that was floating on the sky, oblivious of the why, what, when, it only mattered in those moments uh, and how they made you feel. But something changed along the way. We somehow grew up, we became too familiar, too knowledgeable, too numb to any new experience. You now understand how the car moves, you did engineering, you're doing engineering, you now know how the plane stays afloat. They now seem to be normal conversation starters rather than things that should make you wonder. They seem to be no mystery. The joy has been sucked out at some point. Hence, having demystified this, we go in search of something that is greater, to feel something more, another high, another joy, another wonder. That's why people want a better car, a better phone, uh, to the worst extent, you want a better parent, you want a better friend, uh, goes deeper, you want a better spouse, you know, and these are perfect breeding grounds for cheating and non-contentment, just because you want something that will reclaim a wonder that you have lost. St. Augustine writes this and says, Men go abroad to wander at the heights of mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean, at the circular motion of stars, yet they pass by themselves without wondering. What we seem to have just never seems to be enough, and we bring that into the Christian faith, passing ourselves by without wondering. What does Jesus mean? What does this Christian faith really mean? You seem to be losing the wonder. What if I can help us this evening in a few minutes? Try to recall the wonder as we look out the window, like the blind boy who now can see after 24 years, and have a wonder, an amazement at what you now see. To reclaim the wonder of Christmas. On a silent night, humanity and all we know of it changed. 
We seemingly want to celebrate Christmas because of Thanksgiving, family gatherings, reunions, uh, excessive eating and drinking, and we forget the reason for this particular season. So let's take a short trip down memory lane to try and reclaim the wonder while you are at home at dusk. It's almost morning. And I want us to look at three particular areas in this text that I believe will help us. So one, an unsuspecting caretaker, an unsuspecting caretaker. So many things, uh, if you're a Christian like me for a while, uh, there are many things that are very much disputed about uh, Christmas. Um, it actually has very strong pagan origins, you know. Uh, Christ was not born on the 25th of December. If anyone asks you that question, yes, he was never born there. However, to establish when he was really born, Luke chapter 2 verse 8 will show us that there were shepherds who were watching over flocks at night. This was what will be called a lambing season. It will take place during the season of spring. It will not have extended beyond the month of October. So it's, it's, it's just not right that Christ was born on, in December, on the 25th of December. So there's no need to exalt the day, which is non-factual. Uh, but nevertheless, the same way we do not make big of the Sabbath, but the Lord of the Sabbath, we make big of the Lord who was born. It doesn't really matter when he was born or not, you might want to find the day, but to what end? To what end are you genuinely looking for the day? But uh, I digress. To prove the wonder of Christmas, we need to go back to the start. And this brings us to the lady called Mary, the lady who brings Jesus into the world. Verse 26 and 27 tells us, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And there, Mary makes her short debut. We learn that Mary was a virgin engaged to Joseph, and the angel Gabriel was sent to her with a message. In verse 28, Gabriel greets her like this and says, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And we begin to wonder, why is Mary highly favored? What is so special about Mary? And the simple answer is this. Mary so happens to be the wife-to-be of Joseph, who so happens to be in the line of David, along with uh, God who had promised David that a king will come in your lineage. She happens to be in a very circumstantial position. There is nothing genuinely special about Mary, rather than she is at the right place, the right time, married to the right person who was in the perfect lineage uh, according to whom God was going to send his son. Nevertheless, this doesn't take away from her being highly favored. Just the same way we don't make, it's hard to make sense why those 12 disciples, uh, it's hard to make sense why your parents and not other parents, you know, in the same way it's not wise to always over deliberate. Why not, you know, Joseph sounds nice with Jane, you know, Joseph and Jane. You know, you're like, why Mary? I wish it was me. You know, not me. Okay, the lady. You, you can get what I mean. And it just so happens to be at this particular time, Mary happens to be at the exact perfect moment. So in verse 30, the angels continue to affirm her and tell her, uh, verse 30, but the angels say to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Uh, Aside from being circumstantial, Mary does indeed find favor with God. She has the right to the claim uh, for the rest of her life. She will be the only one who brings Jesus into the world in human flesh. So that said, never forget that she finds favor with God in the same way that you and I find favor with God. That is what we call unmerited favor. And it's sad that in the world we live in today, there are many who have esteemed Mary. She's now like a god. Like she sits there with God and there are people who have actually, you know, if I pray, I will need to pray through Mary. She, she just seems to be exalted. But in the same way that Mary finds favor with God, in the same way that you and I find favor, it is unmerited. There is nothing you ever did to become a Christian, apart from the genuine belief, the human responsibility. The same way no one needs to make a God out of Mary, she is highly favored because she was it, was, it pleased God to choose her for that particular moment. Yes, she nurtures the incarnate Christ for 30 plus years, but she will be saved in the same manner that you and I will be saved, by grace, through faith, by unmerited favor, 
through the belief in Jesus Christ, whom she gave birth to. In the same way that we find favor with God and do amazing things for his kingdom, in the same way Mary does an amazing thing for the kingdom of God by bringing forth Christ. Jesus himself appears to don't play the emphasis given to Mary as being a deity. In Luke chapter 11, verse 27 to 28, say something like this. And it happened as he spoke these things, a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. But Jesus said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Christ lays more significance, not on Mary, his mom, but rather on the word of God. Those who obey God's word are able to do amazing things for God's kingdom. So the blessing is not in the bearing of the son, but believing him. It's not in the caring of the son, but in keeping him. And in the same way, that's how Mary would be saved. Mary at this point is a teenager, probably not older than 14 years, um, if you do your history right. She is betrothed to Joseph. People get married earlier those days. Some of you are saying, yeah, I wish those were the days now. You know what, married those days. So people get married a bit earlier. Um, and she's not older than, and Joseph himself, not older than 20 years. And she has the burden of not only childbearing, but nurturing the incarnate God. What sort of burden was placed on, on Mary? She is an unsuspecting caretaker who finds favor with God, and through her came he who will save us all. What must have gone through her mind? Shame, fear, guilt, doubt. You almost feel sorry for her. You know, I don't know what you're doing when you're 13. Don't you're playing PS or, I don't know. She gets to take care of God, you know, in, in a sense. And we get comfort in Luke 1 verse 38 when she replies, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary knew full well what she was getting herself into and was ready to bear the brunt of raising Christ. What a wonder to be found of use in this way. And I beg to ask us a question. Um, in your youthfulness, does it seem so far that God will be able to use you in any capacity as a Bible study leader, those who serve with us in the committee, in the various ministries that you're plugged into, in the workspaces that you get opportunities, even as a class rep? You know, there are many opportunities presented before us that we are able to shine Christ and to show forth his glory. Will you be found of use in like manner? Should God come calling tonight? or tomorrow, or any other day of your life, it brings it my second point, a unique child. A unique child. Verse 31, the angel goes on the conversation and says, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. The angel informs her that she will soon give birth to a son. His name will be Jesus, translated Yeshua, meaning deliverer or savior. And Christ was his title, meaning the Messiah, the Savior, and was not his son. He was not Jesus. So it was Jesus the Christ. It was like a title, like Bundi, the pastor, or, or something. Uh, so it was, Christ was a title, the Messiah, the, the Savior. Probably he will be referred to as Jesus bar Joseph, Jesus the son of Joseph. That's how people will call him. So what sort of child will this be? Verse 32, verse 32 tells us, uh, he will be a great, uh, he'll be great, and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Verse 33 tells us that, uh, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will not end. And we, we get an amazing description of what this child will be. If you go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, you know, uh, you, you know that, that portion. Uh, a child is born, a son is given, wonderful counselor, mighty God, uh, prince of peace. Uh, he will have an amazing description uh, of who this child will be. Verse 7 of Isaiah 9 shows his mode of kingship, ruling on earth and heaven. It will be established judgment and justice. The zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. This will be the foreknown and for promised unique child, the true boss baby, who was truly the incarnate God. He will come with all power, all glory, 
it makes us remember what it cost him, what manner of sacrifice that came out of humility. Philippians 2 verse 5 to 11, he who did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. May we never forget that he was fully God, fully man, will be so forever. I know that's a very conflicting statement if you're hearing that for the first time. He was fully God yet fully man. He was not pretending on that cross. He was not pretending in the desert as he was being tempted. He was feeling each and every ounce of it. Um, when we shall meet him, he will be in his glorified body, the pattern to which we also, when we die and are raised up, shall also have a glorified body. Uh, it necessitated for him to come down uh, in flesh. Uh, and let me not go through uh, why uh, at this particular time. This will be the unique child given to an unsuspecting caretaker. And the question with that is, what do you do with this child? Um, I don't know if you've ever asked your parents uh, about the moments that uh, took place before they expected you, the nine months, whether they were in regret or so who you, who Nancy? I know, let me change, <laughs> stop, stop serving Nancy. Whether they were in, in, in awe, how they planned and saved up and thought about you and the dreams, or probably you grew up in a place where you felt that was never taken much thought into, uh, I genuinely believe it is God who gives children. You're here for a reason, not because your parents genuinely will it. These are functional that, but I believe there is a purpose uh, to that. Whether um, you are orphaned or you've lost a parent, th there is a reason why you are here. Christ had a unique purpose, very different from ours, but you also have a purpose, and that is to fulfill God's purpose in your life. Nowadays, and I feel many times we waste time um, rather than rush towards that we're running in the opposite direction not desiring to really know what this purpose is it sounds boring it doesn't sound as exciting you have a better plan for yourself than you felt god had um, what would you do with the pattern of this child brings me to my last point an unusual conception an unusual conception mary takes in all this information and in verse 34 she asks how will this be Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Her being a virgin, she wondered how this will be possible. Seeing as the only way for one to be with child, they needed to have engaged in some sexual relation with a person of the opposite gender. And so it's a very perfect question if anyone ever asks you. Okay, yeah, yeah, I believe he did, but come on. It can't have been a virgin, but it just doesn't make any scientific sense. And the angel answers her in verse 35, which I found to be very impactful words of peace. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And somehow that has become one of my best verses for a while now. For Christianity to depend upon the resurrection of Christ, it definitely must hang on the virgin but if you are a Christian here and you genuinely believe on the Easter story, it can't make sense until you get over the roadblock of the virgin birth and center it in your heart that this actually happened. For him to die, he had to be born. And if the circumstances of his birth were a virgin birth and you have genuinely not grasped it, then it will be a stumbling block for you at some point in any conversation. This birth happens before his death and resurrection. And this, if that reality is not true, then everything else is in vain. The virgin birth will entail that a baby will be conceived in the womb of Mary. No man will have a part to play in this process. Let me repeat that again. A baby will be conceived in the womb of Mary. No man will have a part to play in this process. And so is our being born again. Salvation must ultimately come from God with no human effort. If you needed any consolation that it is not you who saves yourself, but it is God who saves you, in the same pattern that no human effort will be involved in the birth of Christ, no human effort will be involved in your being born again. The virgin birth makes it possible for the union of what we call full deity and full humanity it makes it possible for Christ's true humanity without inherited sin from Adam. 
He will neither have a moral guilt, like you're told you're born with an original sin. Christ will not have that. He will have no sin forever. And now we can trust him to be the true and perfect mediator. If Joseph had a part to play, then this whole story is useless. This should just be a club. Uh, We should just party and drink because we shall die tomorrow. But just on the essence that Joseph has no part to play, that is a big statement that this was always God's plan. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, prophecy will involve the virgin birth. That was the plan of God since the beginning uh, of time. Had there been no virgin birth, then there will be no Jesus on whom to depend on. It will jeopardize his entire ministry. He will be a sinful man, dying for sinful men, and that doesn't achieve anything. There will be no guarantee of him being sinless. The reason I esteem this verse is because being born again desires and conform, conforms to this pattern so that we may be called the sons of God and not the son of my father. Yes, my, my father, thank God for him and the years he's been raising me. But at the end of all time, uh, just by the virtue that I am born again and my dad has no part to play in that, parents have no part to play in that, makes me God's son. <clears throat> and nothing will ever replace that. My sonship belongs to God. He's the one who uh, has made me new. It's not poetry. It's not something I think and I feel nice about myself. There is a genuine change in my character, my desire, my trajectory, all because of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit needs to be in our midst. The power of the, high, of the Most High needs to overshadow us. If this is not true of Christ, it's not true of you. Christ makes our pattern for death for birth, for life, for resurrection. He makes the pattern for everything. This verse testifies to the ineffectiveness of works as a means of earning our salvation. You just can't do it. It has to be a work of, has to be a work of God. In verse 36 and 37, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She, she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. We are shown God's omnipotence in fulfilling this by using Elizabeth's pregnancy as evidence of God's ultimate power. In an effort to comfort uh, Mary, in fact, the angel tells her, there's this lady, you know, she's called Elizabeth. She wasn't able to have children. Here's a child. Do you think there is anything too hard for the Lord? For any man, any soul that seeks true salvation to be born again, regardless of their past, should they be drawn to God and should they desire to be conformed to Christ's image, this is not impossible with God. I don't believe there is anyone that God cannot save regardless of your past. And and I've heard stories and stories being, being a pastor. And my heart goes out to the many people in shackles because they feel there's something... Sorry, there's something that they did. Here's me ignoring the water. (laughs) I will ignore it for a while. There is something, they feel there is something they did that outsins the grace of God. And by that virtue, they feel they have no part to play in uh, making that bold step or that bold choice. What really is too hard for God? God's sovereignty and human responsibility in this process. There is no other way into heaven apart from Jesus Christ. No other pattern, no other unusual conception of this unique child entrusted to an unsuspecting caretaker. So in short, in conclusion, had Christ not come in this way, uh, there will be no wonder. There will be no reason for Christmas. There will be no reason for this carol service. If the virgin birth is not true, if um, what he did on that cross is not true, if everything is not true, then this basically is just a tradition to close a service of people who have no hope and they felt nice about themselves at the end of 2022. It genuinely matters how you're thinking about your Christian life, your Christian faith. Are you growing? Are you developing a godly character? Do you watch what you say, what you watch, what you do? Are you genuinely growing as a Christian? It it matters. If we truly desire a true mystery, a true wonder, which you can experience once again, all over again, we need to recall this birth in all its wonder. 
that we may genuinely cry, Abba Father. Let me conclude with a quote by C.S. Lewis. Um, he writes this in a book I read a while ago called The Abolition of Man. Abolition of Man. And it says, you cannot go on seeing through things forever. You cannot go on seeing through things forever. The whole point of seeing through a window is that there is something to be seen outside it. It is good that the window should be transparent because the street, the garden, the beautiful things are opaque and need to be seen. Imagine if you also saw through the garden and you saw through the person that you see. It is no use trying to see through first principles. If you see through everything, then everything is transparent. A wholly transparent world is an invisible world. To see through all things is the same as not to see. And in this house that we have been building in the past three weeks, we looked at a mirror that shows us ourselves. We looked at the walls that remind us of what we have. You look through the window, you want to see hope that when the light comes, it's darkest before dawn, but the light will show up. And I really want to venture outside and make a name, not only for myself, but for God's glory. You cannot keep on seeing through that window just to see through everything else. There needs to be a, an opaque, transparent, true image, true figure upon whom you look up to and you desire to be like them. And that only has to be Jesus Christ. And so as we head into the Christmas season... Um, I don't know your fears in your worries about going home and your desires to um, genuinely reclaim this wonder for, for Christmas, but something amazing happened on that night. I don't fully understand it. You don't as well fully understand it, but it makes sense. A wholly transparent world where there is no objective truth, where you disprove everything you see. Oh, look at the trees. Oh, they're telling you about Jesus. Look at the fruits. They're telling you about Jesus. Look at your friend. They are pointing you towards Jesus. Everything is pointing you towards Christ. You're missing the point. The, the drums, the, the music, the, my, my preaching, everything. Everyone is pointing you towards a greater designer, a greater pattern. And I hope you will believe it sooner rather than later than go through the motions Everyone has to stop swimming and dancing at some point and just marvel at the ocean and marvel at, at, at the dance floor. You need to come to a point of wonder where what you're seeing is something that is true, that is beautiful, that is unique, that is awesome, that is amazing. So I desire that you'll have an amazing Christmas. Uh, enjoy it. Study for those exams. Uh, yeah, then come back and let us keep growing together in our Christian journey, uh, espousing God above everything and everyone. And uh, at the end, if God comes calling, um, and if we don't see each other, um, I'm sure that I'm glad that you came for this particular message. Amen. to stand
praise God, Saul. Amen. Baridi, baridi, kidogo, but praise God, Saul. We have come to the end of the year. Turn to the pastor next to you and say, I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you. And may you remember that Jesus is the reason for the Tell turn to your neighbor and tell them Emmanuel. Mungu pamoja nasi. Nisi bendera ya ushindi. Umekuwa rafa. Umekuwa rafa. Mponyaji. Baba. 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 Amen. Come on, join us as we sing this song. A celebration unto our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just put our hands together like this.
Baba, Baba, Yeah. 